like I said, when we were doing our intro or this morning, uh, we've got a dark web talk here, and I think you're going to like it uh, because it's not just a here's the dark web. It's scary. It's 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 more methodical and it's great. Um, so um, let's see, uh, dark web throughout his professional career, and he's also involved in performing human to human intelligence on the D2 web. He's also very passionate about giving back to the community and has already conducted several talks and seminars in local security meetups, schools, and colleges. He loves volunteering with Cybrary and StationX to help students make their way into cybersecurity. And he looks forward to the end of the day to play and stream one of the AAA games, Rainbow Six Siege. All right, I'm not gonna comment on your choice of games there. Me, I'm a, a Zelda Breath of the Wild man, but you know, we'll, we'll talk about that maybe in a gaming jail or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to a perf. Uh, enjoy his talk. Yep. Th thanks, Micah, for the introduction. Uh, so. Uh, hello everyone, I will be talking about uh, different OSINT tools that you can use uh, to research on the dark web. Uh, so a little, let me, yeah, a little about me. So my name is Apoor Singh Gautam. I am currently doing my master's in cybersecurity from Georgia Tech. Uh, I am involved in uh, academic research in Threat Intel and normally I've been doing Threat Intel work uh, specifically towards the dark website for the past two years. Uh, I do contribute to security community. Uh, I've been involved with uh, many organizations like Null, uh, Cybrary, Cyber Academy, Station X. I recently started into lock picking and I've been liking it so far. Uh, as already told, I love uh, playing game and uh, you can say that I'm addicted to Rainbow Six Siege and somehow I make time to play it every day. Uh, so. Uh, what we will talk about today. So we'll go over what dark web is, uh, why we are focusing on the dark web as a researchers, and uh, what do you gain when you're focusing on dark web or what do you lose when you're not focusing on the dark web. Uh, then we will uh, go directly to tools. So basically I've created four different categories uh, of OSINT tools. So the first category is search engine, search engine tools. So these are all the tools that you can these are all the search engine based tools uh, that you can uh, type any keywords and search. Uh, the second is uh, tools to get uh, onion links. So getting onion links means uh, getting a list of onion links. Like there are many investigate, uh, investigators who uh, keep track of all those new onion links that come up. So that's the second category. The third category is uh, tools that you can use to scan your onion links. And the fourth one is uh, uh, the tools that you can use to scrape data from the onion links. Uh, the last is, uh, so basically these are all different OSINT tools. Now you may need to create your own tool. So I will talk about few tools slash libraries that you can use to create your own data collection tool based uh, architecture system. So let's start with this. Uh, I'm sure you must have seen this image a lot of time on the internet. So basically the web is divided into three different parts. There's surface web, deep web, and the dark web. Uh, surface web is basically the, uh, uh, the web or uh, the different websites that are already indexed by search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, et cetera. Uh, deep web, uh, this comp uh, comprises uh, most of the web and it includes all the links that are not directly indexed by the search engine. So this can include anything like uh, whether you hosted a server and you, you are accessing it through some IP address or you are uh, you are accessing some kind of service that is behind a login paywall. So it can be anything. Now the third one that is dark web that we will talk today uh, mostly. Uh, the dark web is a part of the web that requires special software to access. And uh, there are different forums and marketplaces on the dark web. So going a little deep into dark web, uh, basically, there are different types of or, uh, different organizations that offer their uh, dark web system or an anonymization system. So there are uh, Tor, I2P, ZeroNet, FreeNet, etc. And we will focus mostly on Tor because that's the uh, famous one and a majority of the people use Tor. Uh, so basically how it works is uh, your traffic goes through several different routes or uh, what do you call several, uh, several relays. And that's why it is hard to determine where the traffic is coming from and where the traffic is going. And that is why people use these type of system to hide their activity or if they don't want to be monitored. And uh, if, you all, if you don't know about it, 
as you can see in the right side image the url is a type of alphanumeric characters and it can be for tor specifically it can be either 16 character or 56 character and it's based on the cryptographic algorithm used behind that so there are different types of uh, forums on the dark web or forums or marketplaces on the dark web and uh, we as a researchers we usually focus uh, on forums that uh, uh, that we have requirements for so uh, suppose uh, you are a vendor uh, organization and you have client in banking system so you will want to focus on uh, credit card forums or uh, dump shop uh, forums where different credit cards are being dumped. So according to your client's requirement or according to your requirement, uh, researchers focus on uh, specific types of forums. And uh, so these are different types of forums that you can find on the dark web. Uh, this is an example of how uh, different uh, users, they put uh, different types of services or products uh, to be sold on the dark web. And like there are different Trojans, rats, uh, uh, they're different as a service, like uh, ransomware as a service, malware as a service type of uh, products being sold on the dark web. Now, why are we focusing on this? Like, uh, why is it necessary? So as I already told you about, there are different forums and marketplaces that deal with different stuffs. And this is, these are the places where actors or users, uh, they talk about uh, different types of attacks. They uh, sell their tools, they sell their malwares, ransomwares, and they basically they try to, uh, if they are going to attack some other organization, uh, in most cases, they try to recruit different uh, actors also on the dark web. So if you're doing research correctly and timely, uh, you can find or you can uh, uh, get to know about these things before the attack even happens. Or in many cases, you can get to know about uh, the compromised assets or uh, data breaches before uh, it comes to the surface web. So uh, in majority of the cases, dark web is the first place that uh, actors sell the data uh, if they compromise it from some organization. So if you're doing that research uh, timely, then you can identify these type of things. Uh, the second thing to talk about uh, are the impacts. So there are a few impacts, uh, direct and indirect impacts. So obviously the direct impact is if a data breach has happened, then your information, whether it's personal, healthcare, trade secrets, it is lost. Uh, some of the ind indirect impacts are reputation, revenue, and legal penalties. So you cannot, I mean, if a data breach has happened and someone is selling on the dark web, then obviously you cannot uh, decrease the direct impacts, or but you can uh, decrease the in indirect impacts because you get to know that before and you can take appropriate actions. Uh, so I will talk about a few examples that uh, if you research on the dark web correctly, uh, you can take some action. So the first example is an actor is selling a blind RC uh, exploit for an Australian bank. So let's take an example that you are an Australian bank and you see this post or uh, you have a research wing, uh, dark web research wing that is doing research uh, in a timely manner on the dark web. Then if he or she comes across this post, then uh, they can take, uh, they can uh, like uh, see whether there is any vulnerability, RC vulnerability in your application or not. Uh, similarly, the second one, uh, where an actor is selling an RDP uh, credential for an uh, US based bank, a US based hospital. So if you are a US based hospital, you can go and talk to your uh, cyber division or the security operations uh, people and they can see whether RDP uh, port is open or not and whether there is any vulnerability in there or not. Uh, similarly, there are many examples that you can think of, and uh, if uh, you research on the dark web correctly, you can reduce the impact that uh, it has on your organization. So let's start with tools. So first category of the tools is search engine tools. Uh, obviously, these are not exhaustive list. Uh, there are uh, many tools, uh, but I've used these, uh, the tools that I will be talking about are, I've used and tested it before. And uh, the, I, I did uh, research for new tools, but th either they were not updated regularly or they were not uh, working correctly. So in this category, we have four different tools, Katana, Onion Search, uh, Ahemia, and Dark Search. So starting with Katana. So Katana is basically uh, a tool that you can use both on the surface and the dark web, uh, but it has a dark web component also. So it basically searches 
uh, your keyword in three different uh, dark web search engine. So that is first is Phobos, Tor66, and I think Tordex. And it basically returns all the onion links uh, that are uh, that corresponds to your uh, search in, uh, search uh, term. Uh, the second is onion search. So onion search basically uh, it utilizes sixteen dark web search engines and it has multi processing in it. So you can tune the processing units based on your uh, PC or based on your system. And it searches your uh, keyword in all these uh, sixteen different search engine tools. Uh, so it uh, uh, dumps the output as a .txt file, and uh, basically it has a, a JSON kind of format. So it has the search engine where it uh, got the data from, the title of the web page, and the onion link. Uh, the third one is EMEA. I am sure uh, you must have uh, you must know about EMEA. Uh, it's it's really famous. I think they it is in operation from the past I think eight nine years. And uh, it's the same like normal search engine uh, like Google or Bing. Uh, you can search any uh, keyword and it will give you output of different onion links. And the fourth one is dark search. So this is a, uh, an upcoming uh, search engine. Uh, I think it's been two years or one year. I don't know the exact time when it came, but it's the same as EMEA and you can search any uh, term and it will give out the results. Uh, now coming to the second category that uh, that are the tools that you can use to get an updated list of onion or list of onion links so uh, here we have two different tools uh, hunchly uh, hunchly is a really great uh, investigation tool that you can use to get uh, onion links and the second is h indexer uh, there are many other tools or you can call search engines uh, on dark web uh, or websites on dark web that give out these lists, but these are the two uh, most promising ones. And they don't like many uh, URLs on the dark web, they die, but the H indexer, uh, it's uh, um, as, as far as I know, it, it is up almost all the time. Uh, so, Hunchly, uh, if you sign up for Hunchly uh, reports, it will send you an Excel sheet. And you can see they have three different uh, tabs, new, uh, down, and up. And uh, you get a daily uh, list of the onion links. And you can see uh, which onion links are down for that day, which onion links are up, and uh, which new onion links uh, Hunchly has found. So this is a great way if you are keeping track of all the onion links and uh, uh, keeping a database of new onion links. Uh, the second day is. Uh, H indexer. So H indexer is basically a website on Tor itself, and it uh, keeps track of or it has a list of uh, uh, different onion links. So you can uh, see. Uh, I think it. I don't know if it updates daily or not, uh, but you can see the uh, date and uh, last time when they uh, got to know about this onion link, and whether it is up or not. Uh, the third category that's tools to scan onion links. Uh, so the, here also we have three different uh, tools: onion scan, only off, and onion and map. So onion scan it is a really great tool. Uh, it does separate things. Uh, it has different functionalities. So first of all, if you give it an onion uh, URL, it scans for all the visible pages and keeps track of that. Uh, the second thing it does is it scans for different services. Uh, and uh, looks for different vulnerabilities in different services. So onion, onion scan is also good for those people who are hosting their own dark web uh, onion site so that they can uh, scan their own website and see if they have any vulnerabilities or if they have uh, uh, any, uh, some kind of uh, uh, data being leaked uh, so they can use onion scan and search for that. And uh, the uh, third thing is onion scan does have a uh, GUI based uh, system, or you can call it a dashboard kind of thing. So the result onion scan saves from this, uh, it, you can, it goes, it is a database file. So you can import that into the onion scan uh, GUI and it will give out you uh, different correlations. So suppose this forum is correlated to some other forum in some way. So it will give out you correlations and you can see all the vulnerabilities that it found.
uh the second tool is uh, this uh, on off uh, this is a really simple tool uh, it just uh, takes your onion url and uh, gives out whether the site is up or not and also gives out the uh, domain of the or what do you call it, the title of the site so what the uh, site is for and in this way as you can see this was a duckduckgo site uh, you can uh, give out a list of or you can give a file to this and the file can have multiple onion links uh, the third tool is onion and map and as the name suggests it is basically an map for uh, onion sites uh, it basically runs uh, proxy chains or uses proxy chains to connect to onion uh, or tor and uh, you can supply uh, you can use it to uh, uh, you can scan for all the ports also in this case i have scanned for port 80 and 443 and it basically does what normal land map does it tells you whether the port is open or not uh, the third category uh, uh, sorry the fourth category is the tools to scrape data from the dark web and uh, here also we have three different tools torbot torcrawl and onion ingester so torbot is basically Uh, you give out an onion domain and it will crawl all the links uh, on that particular page so it will get you all the links and this is a really great tool if you want to uh, get the links uh, from a particular page really quick and uh, uh, you can uh, there are different flags in this so you can uh, get html page also from those links but in normal condition or normal uh, default operation it just gets you Uh, onion links from all uh, from that particular page uh, the second tool is uh, tor crawl uh, so tor crawl uh, is default operation is you can get uh, the html page basically it crawls the page uh, for the url you supply and it has options to crawl all the onion links within that page uh, so you can supply that option to this and you can supply uh, or you can input a file uh, where it has multiple domains in that and uh, obviously this is a, uh, again this supports multi threading so you can supply different threads and based on that it will crawl all the pages in the uh, forum or for the onion link that you supply it <clears throat> so the last one is onion ingester uh, and now this is a really great tool one of my good friends uh, created this tool and uh, so basically how this tool works is it has three different components so one is sources operators and the third one is notifiers so sources uh, you can supply your own source and it already uses a few sources like pagebin related sites twitter github gis and reddit it basically crawls these sites and gets onion so we basically have a regular expression to get dot onion from those sites and it keeps track of or it keeps a list of all the onion domains in the database and for database uh, we are using elastic search so it keeps track of all the data it keeps uh, keeps all the onion links in a queue and it uses different operators to uh, perform different operations on those onion links so by default we have three uh, different operators one is yara rule scan another is screenshot and third one is onion scan so onion scan as i already talked about you can give out any onion domain to onion scan and it will scan uh, it will uh, see it will uh, d- uh, find whether you have any vulnerability in that onion domain or not and uh, it crawls all the visible pages of that onion domain the screenshot one is basically it gets the html page and uh, grabs the screenshot of that page and yara rule uh, it's basically scans for Uh, different yara signatures uh, on the uh, onion on the page that you are scanning for or that you are going for so it keeps all these uh, results in uh, elastic search and the third one notifiers so it basically notifies and we have basically two notifiers one is telegram and another is kibana uh, so it uh, sends out daily report for screenshot it took Uh, the uh, total number of crawled onions and uh, different keywords and also uh, whether it found any interesting thing or not and you can uh, tune that in your own code so for sources also and operator also you can include your custom source or custom operators that you want uh, your onion link to uh, grab or you want your onion link from and also what you want that onion link what you want to do with that onion link so this is an example of how it uh, sends reports to the telegram channel and uh, 
uh, you can see a sample uh, Kibana dashboard. And this is uh, how it, uh, we push data to Elasticsearch, basically. Okay, so you saw all these OSINT tools and how they work, but uh, there will uh, be a time that you would uh, require your own tool uh, because uh, if you are researching uh, on dark web and if you come across a particular site, uh, the tools that I talked about, uh, these tools cannot get you the thing that you want. So for example, if you came across a dark web forum and uh, it has uh, some, it has, a, let's say for example, it has a login uh, system. So you can't access the forum without logging in. So using these tools, you can't access, I mean, you have to manually log in. Uh, so there will be a time that you have to create your own tool uh, to basically put the login code and automate that stuff. So, or also if you want to do some other thing. So that's why you need to know how to create your own tool or how to create your own data collection uh, system. So these are some of the tools that you can use uh, to create your own data collection pipeline. Uh, starting with Scrapy. Uh, Scrapy is a really good uh, data collection or data crawling framework uh, in Python. And it does support multi-threading. So you can use Scrapy to crawl any uh, page, whether it's on surface web or the dark web. And it will crawl all the page. It will crawl all the links within that page. And you can write, uh, it's basically you can do whatever you want from that page, whether you want uh, HTML elements from that page, whether you want to search that page for different email addresses or different IOCs, whether it's hashes, email, domains, et cetera. Then Tor, obviously you need Tor if you want to access dark web. Uh, onion scan, as I already told you about, onion scan is a really great tool if you want to scan an onion, onion, scan an onion link uh, for any vulnerabilities or also for grabbing visible pages. Or also it's a really great tool for determining correlations between uh, different uh, onion forums. Uh, then, uh, so before going to Privoxy, if you are creating a tool and if you are accessing dark web, then you would want to uh, use some kind of proxy or uh, either SOX or VPN to go to Tor. Uh, the reasons are, uh, I, first reason is your ISP might have blocked the Tor node. Uh, so you can't access Tor. Or the other reason is uh, it is better to go to uh, use some kind of SOX proxy because you don't want your ISP to know that you are accessing Tor. Uh, so that's why we use different tools uh, that can be used to go route our traffic through some kind of SOX proxy. And Privoxy, there are many tools, Privoxy, TSOX, Polypo. Uh, I've used Privoxy, you can use any tool and uh, it basically routes your Tor traffic uh, through some SOX proxy. Uh, then comes Elasticsearch. Obviously, you would want to store your data in some kind of uh, database and Elasticsearch is a really, a really great uh, tool for that because of that Kibana support and you can create dashboards in that. So that's why Elastic Stack is a great uh, tool. Uh, then comes Redis. So as I already told you about, Scrapy is a multi-threading uh, tool and uh, whether you use, you use Scrapy or not, if you're using any multi-threading tool, uh, you would want to have some kind of cache uh, database or in-memory database because if your uh, tool stopped working, then uh, you have to do you have to scrape all the things again uh, if you don't have any memory in-memory database. If you have an in-memory database, you can supply the indexes into that and it will scra start scraping according to that. So suppose you have uh, some part of the data already being scraped, then it will your tool will not scrape that data again because of that in-memory database. And obviously there are many tools, but these are the starting tools. That, these are the starting uh, tools that you can use to create your own data collection uh, architecture and you can evolve uh, accordingly with whatever your requirements are. So that was it. Uh, we talked a little about dark web, uh, what dark web is, why are we focusing on the dark web, what uh, are different types of uh, forums or marketplaces on the dark web. Uh, we talked about different categories of OSINT tools. Uh, we talked about different search engine tools, uh, tools to get onion links from the dark web and scanning tools and crawling tools. And lastly, we talked about tools to create your own data collection pipeline or architecture. 
and why it is necessary to create your own tools at some point and why you should know how to create your own tools at some point. Uh, if you want to get started into this, uh, first of all, figure out your assets or your motives. Why do you want to research on the dark web? Uh, what assets do you have uh, that attackers can attack on or that attackers are behind? Uh, so first figure that out. Then try searching for keywords based on your products, based on your organization's product or some other assets on these dark web search engines that I talked about. Uh, if, uh, you, if you find some results, analyze it. Uh, try using some other tool to uh, scan that onion link, uh, see what that onion link corresponds to. And if needed, call the data. And obviously, if you want to analyze more, then you need to create your own tools or uh, you need to do manual analysis. So uh, creating tools is more important or it's uh, uh, necessary because manual analysis takes a lot of time. And Obviously, you need to know the method of collecting the data rather than using all these tools. So that's why you should need how you can create your own tools and what method or what what methods you can use to grab data from the dark web forums. And do this on a monthly basis uh, with different keywords and uh, see if you and uh, report that uh, report the findings to your team and see what you can go uh, from there or where you can go from there. Uh, these are some of the resources uh, that you can use uh, to get uh, to start your journey into this uh, the dark web research and uh, these are some of the OSINT tools uh, OSINT framework is a really great website uh, you can uh, see all the tools for both surface web and the dark web and uh, again these two blogs that I've read these are really great blog by OSINT combined and Jake Krebs uh, you can uh, see different uh, search engines uh, that are on the dark web uh, on the OSINT combined list. And JKREPS also uh, has uh, different OSINT tools uh, listed on his uh, uh, forum, on his blog. Uh, again, uh, uh, moving on, these are some of the vendor uh, vendors that release their own blogs and white papers that you can uh, read if you want to know more about dark web uh, monitoring or dark web researching. And uh, uh, the tools that I talked about, the Scrapy, Tor and other tools. Uh, I have already discussed that in my previous talk uh, that I gave at SANS. And you, if you want to know about the tool that, or if you want to know about how to create your own tool-based system and how to automate that, you can watch that tool. Uh, you can watch my talk there. And the last is uh, a talk by Levy. And uh, they really uh, showed uh, how you can use ML uh, or NLP uh, for creating your own dark web uh, spider or crawler. So uh, that was it. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be hanging out in Slack so you can ask me there. And uh, if you want to hit me up later on Twitter or LinkedIn, you can do that. I did create a GitHub repo and you can go there and see all the tools that I already told you about. And if you have any new tools, you can just uh, Folk, if you, you can just uh, put that down there and I will go through that and see if it works and I will include that in the list. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you for, for being here. For, thank you for speaking. We've seen a lot of great feedback in your hallway, but before you go over there, we do have some questions for you from our studio audience. Well, our international audience. Um, first off, um, one of the things that people commonly hear is don't go right to tour the dark web but use a vpn before you going to tour because that can help protect your identity can you speak a little bit to that um yeah so, so uh, i mean it's not always advisable to use vpn because if you don't trust the vpn the vpn may keep logs of that uh, even though vpn is saying no logs policy but uh, we, we never know so it's advisable to use some kind of SOX proxy or proxy chain. So you go through different proxies or different SOX uh, and then go to Tor. So this is advisable because uh, it, this is just uh, so that your ISP doesn't know that you are accessing Tor. Okay. And this, it just adds an extra layer of protection. Okay, so using a VPN to encrypt your traffic, if you have an okay, uh, a good VPN yeah. provider that you trust, it will encrypt your traffic and allow you to to bypass any ISP filters or work filters or or the filters yeah. at Starbucks if you're there or at a hotel. 
Um, and then it also can help protect your data if you're coming back out to the internet. Yeah, so, yeah. But using the proxy change is also a, a great way to bounce around. Yeah, using a proxy chain is good. Uh, it's just uh, the encryption doesn't, because VPN does offer encryption, but proxy, uh, SOX proxy, they do, uh, doesn't offer encryption. So that's the thing that you lose in proxy, uh, in SOX. But uh, obviously if you are using, I mean, if you trust your VPN, then I would say use VPN. Okay. Let's uh, let's talk about a different thing. And you didn't really touch on this in your talk. So if, if you're not comfortable with it, just just say, you know, I don't, I don't know, we'll move on. There are, uh, so there is some danger, some risk to an organization or to an organization systems when, they, when their uh, staff goes into the dark web. There's always the danger of seeing things or interacting with some site that has illegal, immoral, or unethical uh, data being shared on it. There are some commercial services that will go into the dark web for you, take all of that data, harvest it from forums and other places, push it up to the surface web, and then you pay them to just access that data. Do you have any um, familiarity with these tools? Uh, so I, I mean, there are many uh, different vendors that do this, that sell their own, uh, what do you call the system to different organization or based on different organization and they customize it and they take a lot of money, obviously. Uh, so that is a good, I mean, if your organization has that kind of money, I would say go for that because if uh, an organization is just starting into dark web research, and they don't know uh, something, then that is a problem because as you told, there are many things on dark web that uh, will get you in problem if you suppose you see some kind of CP related uh, data or some kind of illegal data on the dark web and it saves an image uh, that it shouldn't in your temp directory, then also you get into problem. So that's why, I mean, it's always advisable to talk to the legal team before uh, accessing dark web in your organization. Uh, but if your organization has that kind of money, then always go for the vendors because they will customize that data and give it to you. Okay, so instead of you having to run your tools and grabbing things, uh, you can set up keywords and then when they scan new keywords, they can send it to you. We're not saying you have to use these services, but let's face yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there are people out there with money and, and why not simplify and reduce risk or yeah. shift the risk from your organization to somebody else's. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Next question for you. You do have some more time, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Next question. And it kind of relates to what we were just talking about. Going into the dark web does present some risk to organizations and people's systems. Uh, if somebody does want to go into the dark web, you've given them many tools there, but are there things that they should do uh, or not do when they're actually doing that, that work in the dark web to protect their, their, their application, their system, and their organization from malware or other things? Yeah, definitely. So uh, it is always advisable to keep your OPSEC in check. And by OPSEC, if anyone doesn't know about OPSEC, it's operational security. And you have to follow some steps so that you don't give away your information to some actors on the dark web or your organization's information. So it is always ad advisable to use some kind of separate uh, system for this work or an isolated VM or isolated cloud for this type of work and always use, uh, don't basically don't keep any personal information on that system. So just use that system for this type of investigations work or data collection work and never use that system for anything else. So that's how basically how you keep your uh, things private. And if you are doing manual uh, dark web monitoring, then if you are talking directly to the actor, always try to not reveal any information because I mean, it's really hard to not reveal information because everyone wants to boast something about themselves. So that's why it's always advisable to always think before you write something. Okay. So um, protect yourself, protect your system, antivirus, don't download stuff if you do, antivirus, yeah. turn up the maximum settings for all of your the, the devices that you send through Tor. Um, good tips. Uh, another thing that people want to know is um, who do you trust on the dark web? You know, if, if people are going into the dark web, going into a forum, and there's some handbook on OSINT or OPSEC or doing other things, 
do you have any suggestion for who you trust or don't trust or, or how do you find the sites that are trustworthy on the dark web? Uh, so almost, I mean, I would say no one. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, but said, yeah. There are uh, many sites that are famous. Uh, there are many forums that are really famous and there are many uh, users also. So basically all the forums on the dark web, they have a, uh, system for users to see uh, what level they are on. So whether they are just starting to engaging in the forum or they have some kind of five-star rating. So there are rating systems. So, I mean, I am not saying all the five-star rating users are good or they, all the five-star rating actors, they always uh, talk. I mean, they don't fake anything, uh, but they are, I mean, you can trust them to some extent uh, about so suppose trust issues comes like many actors they uh, sell the sell some kind of data breach let's take an example of data breach so if five actors are selling a data breach and the first act, one of the actors they have five star rating then obviously you would uh, believe that five star rating guy uh, or person that he's selling the right uh, data and not faking some uh, data and so it's like this uh, type of trust. Uh, you cannot trust any real info on the dark web. Like you talked about OSINT handbook. So uh, I don't think you can trust whether that PDF has some kind of Trojan already or not. So. Yeah, it, it's tough because you're going into a place where you yourself are using uh, extra, you know, yeah, extra yeah. security, extra protection, things to anonymize yourself. You're using fake usernames that you normally don't use. And then yet you have to kind of trust certain certain people or certain other accounts. It's hard. I yeah. think once you get into the kind of a, a deeper level of the dark web, but one that where you are uh, infiltrating forums, gaining trust, learning the people in those forums, um, then you know you can begin doing some other things. Yeah. That's last, true. last question. Um, Rainbow Six, um, best character that's an attacker or defender. I mean, I I have both best for attacker and defender. Okay, so which your bit? What's your favorite for both? Um, for either attacker, it's Zofia, and defender, I would say Vigil. Okay. There you have it, everybody. <laughs> Excellent. That was not for me. That was from um, one of our attendees. Well, thank you, Perf. Thank you very much for for uh, going ahead and giving that that presentation. Lots of tools in there, and I love the cautions. I love the methodologies that you spoke about, also. So, thank you very much for presenting. Yep. Thank you for having me. Awesome.